developed. Well, people are also terrified of... Yeah, people don't like it when you talk with your hands when you drive. Like, I'm... Really? Like, oh, yeah. That happens a lot? Oh, yeah, in the comment section. Oh, people are blowing us up all the time because Mario talks with his hands. They're like, put your hands on the wheel. Like, you guys don't understand. Sometimes it's it's like close combat in here. I feel like I'm taking a Krav Maga class. Some gorilla street fighting. <laughs> Got these catcher's mitts flying at me all the time. <laughs> Your hands on the damn steering wheel. I'll try. No, you, you can't. It's just not in your. It's just not in your DNA. I will. I will. If my hands stay on the wheel this entire episode, you have to Venmo me five bucks. Okay. And the deal will be the other way too. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, Was there a bet that we had with hashtag Nation about? Nah, we'll think about it. It was on a live. Yeah. Oh, the hot. The the. Carolina Reaper? The Carolina Reaper stuff? Yeah. 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 I think you had to eat one if they signed another former Carolina player. Really? No, 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 no. That's not... No, I'm not dumb enough to make that bet. I know it might have been a few white claws in my <laughs> evening, but I wouldn't make that bet. There, on my way back. Kohl's? Yeah. You know they have Kohl's in Arizona. They do? Yeah. Go I, see. I almost ah! pointed at them. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. I almost got gotcha. you. My hands gotcha. are glued to the wheel. Yeah, so MrRogersHomes.com, uh, your Arizona relocation specialist. If you're ever looking to relocate, don't call one of your local agents to find homes for you in Arizona. Just call Sean. <laughs> you, want, you want somebody that knows the area, just call Sean directly. It's, they'll take care of you. Yeah. Rapid fire time. Let's rock and roll. Okay. Very first question. Uh... Breakout candidates for 2021. I'll take this one. Breakout candidate for 2021 is Dane Jackson. Breakout candidate. No doubt in my mind. Wins a number two job. Doesn't even matter if you draft somebody. Dane Jackson will beat him. I am like, I am, I am AJ McCarron in on Dane Jackson. He's your CB2. I'm I'm AJ McCarron in. Like, I... When the Bills signed A.J. McCarron, i have been talking about it for years, years. I am quoted on this channel as saying, if they draft Josh Allen, it doesn't matter because A.J. McCarron's a starter. That is a direct quote from me three years ago. If they draft I've recycled Josh Allen, that it won't times. matter because A.J. McCarron's a starter. That, was, that ended an episode McCarron, one time. It's, they probably end a lot of things. <laughs> I have AJ McCarron in on Dane Jackson as my number two. AJ McCarron. Uh, I'll stay. I'll stay on the same side of the ball, but I'll go with DJ Epinesa. I think another year in this defense. I think he's going to, because of the expectation is not very high for him. Yeah. I think that the, the production that he'll have from the defensive end position. Plus, Dane ain't starting because they're drafted at CB two oh, at thirty. God, let's get to the next question. Um. Okay, here we go. Mokes5186, first time commenting, I think, ever. Hey, Mokes. Yeah. Uh, what impact will Star have on the D-line coming back after a year off at his age? Does this help or hurt his game? I think that's a great question. I think it's great. I think the fact that he was able to rest and get away from the game will be good. I think that his game is very translatable where you're not asking him to do a lot of stuff. It's not like a, it's not like a skill position where, oh, he may be a little rusty running routes. He may be a little rusty mm-hmm. with the timing. If he was a quarterback, I'd be terrified taking a year off. But the fact that his sole responsibility is to try to clog up the middle, eat bodies, try to push the pocket, I think he's going to be fine. Especially if he got bigger, they're probably going to be better. Yeah, I think adding weight at like 30-ish is a lot different than keeping weight on at like 26-ish. Yes. Right? Like, I think at the end of the day, these guys are professional athletes. Yes. Even when they retire, they're still professional athletes. They still yeah. have been conditioned to take care of their body. Their entire adult life. I'm not worried about Star. I'm excited at to see all. him come back. Though. Yeah, I'm not worried about Star at all. Evan Anderson, possibility of trading back for future picks in 2022 or 2023 uh, due to the lack of game film and amount of time off from the development of some of these college players that they had due to COVID. Do you think teams might be wary of unknowns surrounding a lot of these players in this year's draft? Uh, if you're Buffalo sitting at 30, 
there's going to be a team who's going to need a player at 30 that I don't think you necessarily need. No. I think trading back makes a lot of sense, but I don't think there's a single scenario you're getting 22 or 23 first round picks for. Like, no, 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 no. You might be getting 22, 23 fourth round picks, 22, 23 fifth and sixth round picks. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're getting anything more than that, right? If you're trading back, you might pick up, you might, if you're, if you're just trading back like 12 picks, you might pick up that second round pick and, and a third round in 2022. Yeah. Like, you're just not going to get a ton of picks. So, is no. it a possibility? Absolutely. But I just don't think it's going to be a premier pick that you're getting from 30. Well, we have, we've already had a, uh, you know, the, the uh, bar had already been set with some of the trades that Miami, Philly, and San Francisco have already made in right. the first round. Yep. Uh, that, that 30 spot is a prime spot for a team to move mm-hmm. up for a guy that they would like to exercise a 50 option, maybe mm-hmm. a corner, a quarterback, a tackle, yeah. maybe from those positions. Um, which is fine. I know you're probably going to get the fourth best quarterback, the fifth best corner, or the sixth best tackle. Right. And, and tackles this year really aren't in very high praise because yeah. they had played a limited amount of snaps. Right. So it's the chicken of the egg comment. You can say, well, they, not many people played, so not many people are going to want the first round picks to exercise on to take a shot at these guys. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to say, you know what? The cap didn't move this year, actually went down, and it may go. To, it may stay the same next year. Mm-hmm. So the picks in these two draft classes, what's going to happen with them? Um, getting volume is always great. Yeah. So you, you have a chance to miss. Right. So I, I wouldn't be upset if the, if the Buffalo Bills traded back, but I think they, they're going to go BPA 30. I mean, we talked about it on an episode before, but the more I think about it, the more I think I'm putting a CB2 across from Trey. Man. We talked about it in an episode a little bit earlier this, this week. Um, of Wallace versus, you know, Wallace and Dane Jackson versus drafting the corner. So, I don't... Yeah, I mean, listen, Mar, I love you like a brother, and I'll forgive you when you're wrong about Dane Jackson. That's okay. All right, Chris Janke, this one's just for you. Can Mario go off on a tangent about Kyle Duggar? I did respond to this already and said, go to any hashtag pre-draft live stream. <laughs> but I figured Chris asked, so you might as well. When was Duggar taken again? Uh, end of the first, I think. Or the start of the second? Yeah. It was... Chin was taken by Carolina. Duggar was taken by uh, New England. Yeah. Can I go off on a tangent? Yes, because I think Kyle Duggar is the straw that would stir this defensive drink that's been together for 60-plus games. You think he's game... You, you think he's, I think he's the Swiss Army knife... Tyron Matthew that you need in this defense to put all over the damn field. He was 37th overall, so high second. So you weren't getting him. You weren't getting him. No. If you bundled two and three, maybe you were getting yeah, him. But, you, not, not but Jeremy Chin is there's a nice little substitute there. He got taken at the end of the second round. But the point is this. Focus was Duggar. I like Duggar. I think he could have added an element to this defense that you may not have paid Matt Milano $44 million if Kyle Duggar was here. Oh, I'm just man. throwing it out there. The fact that if he went down, you put Duggar in that spot next to Edmonds. What? Okay. Kyle I'm Duggar done. fits the profile of, and we talked about this on another episode earlier this week, what you're going to see from future yes. third linebacker. Yes. He, he's he's your transition of a strong side linebacker now. That's what you're going to see. Which probably you're started see- with... With Cam Chancellor, too, by the way. Right. I mean, probably, right? But you're going to see that transition of strong side linebackers being there to, to you know, be that, that forward-moving hammer to stop the run. You're going to see strong sides start to fade off and be more former safety-esque. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Just big safety. I, I agree with you there. I disagree that Kyle Duggar um, was the answer. Okay. You never admit when you're wrong, so I'll never be able to throw something. Oh, God. Come on! I literally just quoted myself about Josh Allen and AJ McCarron. How big, how big is that knife wound? But like, it's not fun when you make fun of yourself. Oh, all right. Take it off the table. Okay. Uh, Paul Pagano says, "Have the Bills gotten better from last year? Lots of moves, but uh, have we really done enough to put us into the Super Bowl?" I think. I think you addressed your need at speed back with Brita for now. These are all for nows, right? Mm -hmm. My concern is you've retained a lot of the talent, and that's my concern, 
right? Like, you have the opportunity to improve talent, but the Bills didn't really have the cap space to improve talent necessarily until the market came to them. So instead of taking the, we might take a step back in free agency because we don't have a lot of capital, they took the, let's keep what we have, and then we'll try and add what we can afford. And I think that's fine, but I understand why people say this isn't getting us anywhere. We're in the same spot two months ago that we're in right now. We're in the exact same spot because with we retain Matt, the same players. With Matt Breida and Emmanuel Sanders. I think that's a different conversation. <laughs> that, leads, that leads to another rapid fire okay. with Sanders. My, so point, we'll my point is this. My point is this. I don't remember the Patriots ever having a ton of cap room. And I don't ever remember them making. Well, that was because Tom Brady took team friendly deals. I'm gonna make invalid points. Listen, Tom Brady. Okay, guys, you're gonna hear six years from now how Tom Brady's making like eight million dollars a year to be a consultant, and all that is is every year that he didn't take money in the salary cap. You know, Robert Kraft's like, hold on, I'll slip you, a, I'll slip you a mill to be a consultant until you're dead. Soft money. It's illegal. You're not allowed to do stuff like that. So when you hear that Tom Brady's making millions of dollars to be a consultant for the Patriots, don't be shocked. That's all I'm saying. Sorry. I just this whole Tom Brady takes team friendly deals. I wasn't no, even gonna doesn't. mention him. No, he first, doesn't. first of all, it already pains me enough to make a Patriots reference. That's, That's true. A, That's true. My point is this though. I never heard of them having huge amount of cap space. And they never really made huge, huge splash this signings. Is a Fusillo dealership? My point is this. They retained who they had, who they developed. Would they sign a free agent here and there? Yes. In the later years of Brady's career, they used to sign bigger name free agents. But when they were making runs, winning 11, 12 games a year, they were retaining their own talent. And they weren't ever really, really, really high as far as cap space. Okay. That's where the Bills were this year. Yep. I think that I think that's a valid point. Uh, Rafael Satimini Martins. You should Bean have gone after a better tight end instead of Emmanuel Sanders. I think the question face value people are going to say, well, Sanders isn't a tight end. I think, I, think right San, I think Sanders is supplementing a tight end position. I think that's a really fascinating point because you're not the free agent group. You. Like let's just be let's just be realistic. You weren't getting Hunter Henry. Uh-oh. Oh. Where's your mom? I'm gonna call her in ten minutes. Okay. You weren't getting Hunter Henry. No. Nope. There were no free agent tight ends that were in your price range. No. That's it. No. Nor should there be. I know everybody likes John U. Smith, but you, this is not the that that's not this not the way this was gonna go. Would you right? have taken John U. Smith over Matt Milano? No. And I don't think a lot of people would either. No. I, and I think that's that's a valid point, right? When you look at the money, that's a valid point. So, does Sanders replicate for you what you're going to expect from your tight end? Well, Sanders does a great job of finding soft spots in the zone. He's not going to do a lot for you after the catch, at what 34, 33, but. I think he supplements your tight end position. I think it's a fine one-year solution while you continue to look for something. You've got that, I'm so proud of you, smile on your face. No, I, yes, I am. Okay. But it's more for, who's, this, who's individual? Uh, Raphael. Raphael. Can I just tell you how much I loved his question, the wording of his question? Yeah. Like, first of all, the nation's smart enough to know what he meant. Is the fact that, read, read the question again. Really Should Bean have gone after a better tight end a, instead of Sanders? Gone after a better tight end than Sanders. So he's already making the inference that Sanders is supplementing the tight end right. position, which I love. Uh, I don't think you could have found a better tight end. Yeah. First of all, as Paul said, financially you couldn't because yeah. you would have you would have hurt yourself in other places. Second of all, you're not committed to it. You didn't make a huge – you didn't say three years, $15 million for Emmanuel Sanders or, you know – and. Here's a guy that's played with Manning, Breeze, and Roethlisberger. He'll find the zone for Allen while Knox and all these other guys get it. I'm fine with that. I'm completely fine with it. But that's a, that's a sneaky, awesome question. Right, I and I it. wanted to call it the wording because people might say, well, Sanders isn't a tight end. No, no, no. no, no but but you know, you get right. The more savvy one knows what he means by it. That's right. what I love about it. Right. 
Uh, Donnie Brook asked, what do we do in the draft? Or do we need to talk about the pass rush? We talked about that <coughs> in another episode this week. So uh, you could, you'll just have to reference back to another episode. We talked about F.A. Odava in another episode. Well, I'll, t- I'll, I'll ask the nation. Okay. Would, would you rather have a, what would you rather have more dominant of, secondary or defensive line? Let me let me ask you this. What do you think of the Jacob Hollister pick? This goes to Dustin H., another Wyoming cowboy headed to town. Can we uh, can you talk about that and make our day? What do you think of Jacob Hollister? I think that that is being number one financially finagling the uh, the cap credit for a vested veteran. Mm-hmm. That's one. Two. I think this is just more of an insurance policy on anything else. Okay, you lost um, you lost Croft. Mm-hmm. Okay, you went you traded Lee Smith. You traded Lee Smith. You went a little younger, a little bit more athletic tight end. Now you have a guy that's more comparable to a Dawson Knox who's in that room with him. Yeah. Uh, maybe he could do things um, and help develop Knox, who is your draft pick. But I think more than anything else, just like Matt Breida, Hollister and Breida to me are insurance veteran minimum deals. Yeah. That if you can't get them in the draft, you still have money to you. Right. I'm with you there. Um, if this move – doesn't tell you that the Bills, again, intend to pass the ball 40 times a game. I don't know what does. They took away their best run-blocking tight end and signed Jacob Hollister instead and let Croft go. Who is a like, big wide receiver, really. Hollister's not. Hollister, yeah, Hollister's not going to help you in the run game the way Lee Smith helped you in the run game. Exactly. I know people didn't like Lee Smith because he was, you know, unexciting. But the fact of the matter is he did have a tendency to catch some touchdown passes every now and again. Even the other team forgot about him. That's how McKenzie got six this year. Like, let's just be honest, okay? I like Isaiah McKenzie. I do. I like Isaiah McKenzie. <laughs> but he played like 20% of snaps. He's still Isaiah here, McKenzie you know. saw half the number of snaps this season that he did last season. Does that seem, does that seem logical to you? He saw half the number of snaps this year than last season. He didn't miss a single game. Kenzie saw less snaps than the previous years. Because with the addition of Diggs, you didn't have to go gadget mode. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, which is why they got him for league minimum. Yeah. You know, that's why. That's but why you, you got him for, for league minimum number. or shop your wares somewhere else. Right. That's why you got him for basically. Can you play running back? Well, they tried. <laughs> <laughs> they did try. Um, I'm going to give you Daniel Gari says, what's the plan at defensive end? But I'm going to be a little more specific. Um, I'm going to pull up via spot track free agent defensive ends. I'm going to give you three of them. You have to tell me which one we're signing. Okay? We're just going to alter this just a little bit. SpotTrack.com is particular when you're looking at pass rushers. I just want to point that out because it's like defense, defensive line, defensive end, tackle, edge is a totally separate category. So we're just going with defensive ends. We're just going to keep it simple. We're going to just defensive ends. That's it. We're not going edge guys. The Bills have shown no interest in edge guys. No. Ever. So, available defensive ends. So salty. I know. So, these are, again, there might be maybe announced deals for these guys, but maybe not. Okay. Everson Griffin, Justin Houston, or Bruce Irvin. Those are your three. Justin Houston, Everson Griffin, or Bruce Irvin. Three very different profiles, so go ahead. You got to sign one of them. One of them's going to be on this on this team on a one year deal, one year, three and a half million dollar deal. I in think the, that's realistic for any of those. In guys. the interest of fairness, Paul, number one, the one guy that does not fit the profile at all is Houston. Okay, I don't think he fits the profile. Number two, I'll take Griffin because I know your boy. Bruce Irvin is who you're dying to talk about. I do. I want Bruce Irvin. Now, ages. Do we have the ages that are listed? <laughs> yeah, this is where this conversation takes a turn for the worst. For Houston's million. the youngest of though. He's 32. But the other two are 34. He's more built of a Hughes type. Mm-hmm. I know that's already on this team. That's why it seems confusing when I say this. That's really not what he likes. There's the none of those none of those three guys hurt your football team. <clears throat> no, not at all. Oh yeah, none of them hurt your football team. 
And all of them, I think, are actually realistic. I think Houston a- actually is a bit more I've heard realistic. Griffin's name brought up a lot, yeah. and there's a reason why. is because he could, he could be a potential fit. Well, he also wants big money. Like, he wants big money. And the market's just not going to come to him. It's big money, big money, no whammy, stop. Yeah, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, stop. All right, we're going to go with one of Stevens. Even though we started the episode with one, we're going to end the episode with one because he had like 11 of them. Um, he asked three to trade away, three to trade, four, and three to cut. Let's just cut that down one, one, one. One player to trade, one player to trade for, one player to cut. Those three. One player to trade away, one player for what? Just yeah, you know? it's it, what like a realistic player that you could trade and get value for that you wouldn't necessarily hurt your team. One player you could bring in via trade that again would add value to your team, and one player you'd cut. Oh boy! So why don't we start with cut, right? Because I think cut makes the most sense to start with, right? If I'm cutting anybody, um, at this point. I'm June 1st releasing Mario Addison. Damn it. I am. Right. If you look at the guys on, if you look at the defensive ends that are available, I think if I'm looking at, I can have Everson Griffin for Mario Addison money, I'm like, what? To the top of the van. Yeah, I know. I was my coffee up there the other day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I noticed it last night. I was like, nah, that's fine. It's not going to go anywhere. If I can get Everson Griffin for Mario Addison money, I'm getting Everson Griffin for Mario Addison. That's that's all there is to it. I know it t- I know Mario Addison and and Mario Addison removed, but he did he did con- he did guarantee some of his salary again. But again, you could still June first cut that. So yeah, I'm still I'm still on the Mario Addison post June first, given given the options that are out there. <sighs> Damn, I don't know who to cut because Mario Addison financially makes sense. Yeah. Everyone else, you'll take a cap hit that you can't absorb. What about Vernon Butler? He already restructured. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. Point is this. You, you send a horrible message if you cut a guy you just restructured. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point. I think it just – because it, then no one will ever restructure again. That's a good point. No, that's a good point. Who do I cut? Dean Marlowe? Well, he'd have to be signed to be cut. He's not still on the team? No. Okay, no, I'm not cutting anybody. I thought he was still on the team. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I just expect him to be there. I know, every year he just keeps coming back. Um, all right, so who to trade away? Devin Singletary, 110%. I know. Yeah, I'm on that boat too. We agree with that because it's yeah, like he, he carries the most value, and especially if you decide to go running back at 30 or any time in the draft. Yeah. You got Matt Breida. Um, he does hold the most value for it. He's got two years left on his deal while a team figures it out. We mentioned right. that in an episode a little bit earlier this week. It just makes the most sense. Who else could you trade away that you wouldn't absorb a ton of cap mm-hmm. that would make sense? Right. I just don't know. Like, right. There's a bunch of guys with value, but they're only valuable here. Mm-hmm. Not Yeah, a, whole, a wholeheartedly agree. All right, if you had to bring somebody in, right, probably best to talk about what position you think would need a player to be brought in for via trade. So what's what's the glaring position to you that you need to bring somebody in via trade? I'm trading AJ Klein for Vic Beasley. <laughs> <laughs> you trade anything for Vic. <laughs> who am I? Who am I bringing in? That's a tough question. Right? It's tough, and it's interesting to see. Like we talked about Patrick Peterson. Yeah. What do he sign for? Ten million. Some absurd. You weren't getting them anyway. You know what I mean? Like the CB two seems like there's a hole in the CB two. There's there seems to be a hole at defensive end. Hole at guard. Trade for a guard, man. Give me a guard. Not named Ford. I mean, they retain Bucker. I'm just saying that he's on the team. I'm just saying he's on the team. Um, I am on. See, here's where I'm on the fence about trading in for a player. I guess it's probably a great point to end the rapid fire with. I have so much faith that they that this team knows what it's doing that trading for a player is not a necessity for me, right? In mm. previous years, it'd be like, oh, no, we got to bring somebody in before we get to the draft, or we got to bring somebody in at the draft, trade one of these later picks for, you know, sort of a, a crappy contract or a guy in a bad situation. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, that's when they had cap room. You could absorb that. Buffalo was always yeah. the team that had so much room you could absorb their contract. Right. They can't do that anymore. Well, that's true, right? To take a bad contract, but to take a guy who's maybe 
you know, a team's disappointed in, you know, like those, those trades, uh, it, like a player for player swap. Right. Yeah. Uh, I have so much faith that Bills understand the dynamic of what they need and how to get it, that trading for a player isn't even on my radar. Like, I don't, I can't tell you that trading for another player is a better option than them just going to find one on free agency because there's still a ton of talent on the free agent market or going after it in the draft because they've done such a good job of identi identifying guys who could play for you right away. So if I'm, tra who do I trade in? I don't trade for anybody right now. Unless something at the draft proposes itself. Like, yeah. here's here's a starting guard. He's played the last three seasons. Uh, we're transitioning to a zone scheme, and this guy doesn't work for us. Right? Or opposite. You know, we're, we're transitioning. Out, exactly. We're transitioning out of a zone scheme. This guy doesn't do it for us. We drafted our guy in round one. This guy is, he, he does, he's a scheme. He no longer fits the scheme. Throw us a fifth for him. Yeah. That, I mean, I think you have to take. You know, you have to take deals like that, especially in a draft where you don't get a lot of contact with players. I think that's underpinned here. With a draft, man, you get you can't meet with these players in person. You only can have Zoom meetings. Such so 30, a crapshoot. The 30, you used to get 30 workouts. with You used to be able to bring 30 kids in and work them out. Gone. Can't do that. Nope. Everything is done via these pro days and via virtual meetings and virtual workouts. Like, it's just, it's, it's, you're going to, you're going to hear names of guys from colleges you may have never heard of in rounds five, six, and seven. I could so see that. I mean, teams sending a list to the player, send us back these, these drills that you've done. Mm -hmm. Send us a video of these drills. Right. Why not? A guy could do them a hundred times. Yeah, but you don't know that you like, like, without cutting the, the footage or something. You know what I mean? It'd be weird. Every team is going to have different requirements. I feel bad for these kids in the draft because dealing with all that, Especially if you're a fringe guy anyway, like you're going to put in hours and days and weeks of effort getting, you know, film out to these guys. And that's another thing. There's so many pro days that have happened. You can't find anywhere. I challenge you to find the Kansas pro day. I looked for hours trying to find Puka Williams pro day. Puka Williams? Puka Williams. I was just curious. I just wanted to know. I just wanted to know. There's a there's a guy from uh there's a player from Kansas, cornerback from Kansas. I was really interested in. Right? Can't find their pro day anywhere. If it's not Alabama, you can't find the pro day. It's frustrating. Well, no, I mean, and I understand you you, you dig, you dig for those things. Paul sent me videos that look like was shot, you know, from the like grassy a film. Yeah. Film. Back into the left. Back into the left. I'm like, what, the, Paul? Where'd you film this? Dude, did you see his vertical? <laughs> <laughs> You just see Belichick creeping over the fence. <laughs> I love the I love that gift with the with the binoculars in, in Indianapolis. <laughs> All right, so uh, decent rapid fire. We're at thirty minutes. Damn it, we are not good at this. Remember, when we used to have the timer. Maybe we need to bring back the timer. I'll Sixty seconds. I'll bring back the timer.